<laughs> we're just waiting on Ghost to come back. Finally, our chat has been restored. Damn you, Twitch. Damn you all to fucking hell. <laughs> I hate Twitch sometimes. Just not loading chat while we're trying to talk about transbox. Ugh! Fail mode. Absolute fail boat. Uh, but that's just the way things roll sometimes. Those are some fucking legit transmogs and some dog shit ones, which is always a good combo. Don't you agree? I agree. I agree. So it's, you... like, it's like the college thing, mate, of what girls used to do when you get like a really hot girl, like a perfect 10, it will stand next to like a two. A perfect 10? Yeah. It stands next to a two? Yeah, because it makes them <laughs> look fitter. Hello to you. Hello to you, sir. Oh, so, what was your winner? The DK. By just by a long shot. Yeah. That was that was the one for me, that DK. I mean I liked the the monk challenge mode set. Uh, I liked a lot of them, but the DK took it for me. I loved it. The fucking just the hot the it was a it was almost a full tier set, but just a sort of change like the shadow pan head with the cape and then the samurai looking sword, it just looked like an evil samurai. Oh, it's, it wasn't for me that one, but the warlock one in the priesty stuff was fucking yeah. so good. I thought it was so nice. In fact, it's, it always made me uh, want it. <laughs> Which is odd. I'm not going to farm a transmog. I refuse. I fucking refuse. So, what else I was also going to say, and what I wanted to bring up, is a big thank you to the audience as well, because I got my benediction back on my priest after going through four GMs. How? I moaned and complained. It, it's so retarded. Um, if anybody doesn't know what happened there, is we had a friend from Canada called Rody. And he wanted to play with us on the EU service. So, being a sir, I went to the store. I bought World of Warcraft and the Burning Crusade, I believe at the time. Registered them to my name. And then I transferred my priest to the other account and gave him access to it. Uh, so he, And then he paid me for it. Okay. So I bought him an account. and Because he was a priest. He was always a priest throughout all of Vanilla. Yeah, he wanted to play with us. So I got him an account. I gave him my priest. The troll priest. And the fucker deleted my benediction. Who does that? Who deletes a benediction? My God, that was so fucking annoying. So I sent a GM message about six months ago saying, can I have my benediction back? They were like, no. And then recently really started to bug me because I can't get it again. I've obviously completed the quest. Why be such dicks about it? So I sent them another message saying, please can I have my benediction back? I can't do it again. They sent me back a message saying no. Right. So I then made a screenshot on the live stream with the guys, which had all pictures of my character with the benediction, saying, look, I love this thing. Look at all the screenshots I took. Blah, 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 blah. Please, can I have it back? No. Screenshots are not evidence that you had this item. Right. Which then pissed me off, because obviously I had the item, because my character can't complete the quest again. It's not just that. Screenshots would sort of be a way of saying that you do have the item, because aren't the wild screenshots coded to your account? Well, I did modify it in Photoshop. Okay, that's what I So I, I kind of cut and pasted four or five different screenshots together into a montage, a collage. Nice. Uh, but they didn't believe it either. <clears throat> that went down the wrong hole. Um, so <laughs> uh, the next step was I got angry then because he said it's not proof. So I sent him one back saying, well, I can supply video evidence from me of me having a benediction. Would that help? What about your quest log? Well... Apparently that uh, it didn't occur to me to even say that because that's fucking obvious as shit, especially to a WoW GM. And he replied saying video evidence is not enough to support that you had this item. So I said I wrote another email saying, "Dude, I can't complete the quest again. You can see my character has done the quest. There, I cannot get this item again. If it was a case of I had to refarm it, I wouldn't really mind. I'd have to do multiple core what twice or something. But you can't get it again though. No, you can't do the quest again. So I complained and complained, and then uh, I logged in." I had a mail. There's my benediction. Just gave it to me. They didn't even reply. He just sent it to me. Like, stop fucking asking. Here it is. So it was awesome. Because everyone helped me put the I'm going to do together. that for the main analog. What if? <laughs> I think they can track you didn't have that. And I'm sure lots of people have tried that. <laughs> lots okay. and lots of people have tried that. Uh, but let's talk Christmas. We're doing... Uh, we've got two more shows, I think. Let me check the diary. Uh, 29th. The fucking hell. That's after Christmas, mate. That is after Christmas. Got one more show between now and Christmas. One more show between now and Christmas. Is we are doing a best of class transmog competition. 
Uh, we are. We're doing so. It doesn't matter if you've already submitted your transmogs or if you've already won. Yeah, we're going to open up a separate forum probably tomorrow in the next 12 hours or so on the website on printgaming.com and you can submit your best in class transmogs and we'll pick winners. We'll try and sort prizes out. I'm not promising anything. Uh, we'll try and sort something out for Christmas. A little bit of fun before Christmas. Best of class. I'll make a video showing all the best of class ones with some commentary and stuff. All that kind of stuff. So please get them submitted. Just really quickly, please, 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 just a couple of things. Make sure it's from your load screen. Make sure we can def like we can visibly see what class it is because obviously you can be in different classes with the same tier set looking items. And just set. Yeah, please stop sending like nine screenshots of your character. It's real. We're only going to accept the one. That's it. We're going to accept the first one. So somebody submitted ones with the back, to the side, to the front, all that kind of stuff. I'm literally just going to take the first one, and that's it. The otherwise, we're, we're going through you know fucking characters spinning around and all sorts of stuff. We're not going to do that. Just the front load screen. Your character select screen of your character. That's all we want. Zoom it in, turn your character, do whatever the hell you want. But your character select screen and one screenshot. That's it. That's all you need to do. And don't send them to my Gmail. <laughs> send them on the website. Put them on the website and your class specific one. And we'll have a nice competition. And then we should probably pick an overall winner, I guess. Uh, which would be the Transmog of the Year, pretty much. 2012. 2012. Oh, oh, Krispy Kreme. Have you seen his Christmas 2012. song? Wait, have you seen his Christmas no? song? No, he's done a Christmas song. Prepare to lose your shit, mate. Is we'll it watch awesome? it after the show. Yeah. <laughs> watch it after the show. It's basically why you want for Christmas and everything's John Cena related. <laughs> Do you know what else actually took the shine off it? Is this guy is probably like he's got to be at least like eighteen as well. Like, I, I think he's older this, than that. Yeah, because he's got like tattoos and stuff. And that took the shine off him because I thought it was a guy trying to be legit a rapper, but he's obviously shit, but he, he's doing it as a goof and now it's just taking a shine off it for me. It's like the whole Father Christmas isn't a real thing. That's just not fair. It's not. There's youngsters in the audience. That's not fair. You just did a bad thing. I want to talk about some TV stuff, if I may. Please. I have just started... And can anyone tell me how many seasons of The Walking Dead are there? Three. Are there three? Are you sure? Because I started watching The Walking Dead yesterday evening, because okay. Emma was out. I am midway through season two. Not bad. Terrible acting. Gotta be said, worst acting ever, especially from the main guy, Rick, with the worst Texan accent I've ever heard. And a guy with really high pants. He fucks his wife. I know. See it, mate. See it. It's fucking shocking. The Hispanic looking fellow. See, someone here saying it's two. They're on season three. Season three's out. Uh, which is fucking... It's pretty good, though. It's very graphic. Oh. Very, very graphic. I'd say we didn't talk about it. I mean, we can go into spoilers on season one. I've only seen season one. I actually mustered the courage to do it because that's my bitch fit is zombies. No, sir. But anyway, two things on season one. One of them is a really nail-biting, toe-breaking, fist-clenching part is where the guy is chained to the post and the zombies are at the door. When oh, that's the, the very key. end of season one. Ooh, shit, no. That, I did not like that. Merle. Yeah, Merle. Merle. As well as, I mean, this is the end of season one, so if you're planning on watching... Oh, she was Nice. If you're planning on watching The Walking Dead and you haven't seen it yet, then just zip out for like a minute or something because all I'm going to talk about now is the very end of it. So anyway, and begin. <laughs> the fucking complex at the end of season one. CDC? Yes. Indestructible complex. Indestructible. Oh, is that what bothered you? The fact that this place is impenetrable and it's all high tech and there's loads of shit in there for them to do. Uh oh, there's a self destructed If you are still inside, you are about to die. Damn it, we better make another couple of seasons. Now I'm confused now, you've lost me. It's basically. It looked like a place where. You know, I can't explain it. It's just too obvious. If you just put them in that complex, and unless someone was infected inside. Excuse me. And that's, that's you know, the no move on. How can we carry on for it? Okay, let's blow the place up so they have to leave. I hate it. Well, they had no power. They had to get out. No, it wasn't. It was a self-destruct. It wasn't. No, it wasn't thing. a self-destruct. It's Mate. not a self-destruct. I guarantee you, I watched it today. They run out of power, and when the building runs out of power, there is a risk. It is a self-destruct in terms, but if the building has no power, it cannot defend against the diseases escaping, so it has to self-destruct. That's legit. That, that exists. That is true. 
the CDC does have that because they ca bio level four stuff cannot possibly enter the population. That's plague and shit. That's bad news. That strict stuff's legit. I thought you were gonna say is that they escape via the use of a grenade. I'm pretty sure the CDC glass is designed to withstand explosions because the whole purpose of the self destruct is to stop terrorists. Terrorists, apparently, if we're to believe 24, use a lot of explosives. Back up. Don't bring 24 into this. Did they 24? use explosives in 20? In Did they use explosives? They used nukes, my friend. That's what I'm saying. So the CDC should be defended against explosions. And a lot of knives. And a lot of dammits. Damn it! Damn it! But it's pretty good. It's pretty fucking, fucking good. Bring 24 back. 24's gone, isn't he dead? Now no. they're doing a 24 movie. They're supposed to have been, but they've scrapped the script three times now. Three Jack times. Jack Bauer disapproved. Well, let's be honest, mate. It's got to pass quite a critical reception if they're going to make Jack like it. How can 24 work in a movie? That's what bothers me. Yeah, I see. The entire mean. idea of 24 is it's 24 hours. Well, let's look at it like this. They did a season filler between two seasons called Redemption, which was like a two-hour special, but that was done in real time. So it'd have to be like a, a, something that happens in real time in the film. Not a lot can actually happen in real time in no. an hour and a half. But I think they? Well, they was, could make it like three yeah, hours long. They were talking about not doing it in real time, which to be honest, the film is based on 24 hours. I know that and it's in real time. I know that that was the gimmick of it. But let's be honest, if it's the same show, but it's just not in real time, I'd still fucking watch the shit out of it. I think it'll lose some of its suspense if it's not in real time because you're kind of with them at the time it's going down. Which has always been part of 24, is the countdowns and stuff I feel like real time as yeah. it's happening. So they could lose some of the, the sort of grip. They won't be able to use like crucial uh, story points like they did in the real season, like when they actually say like a bomb's going to go off in six hours. Well, like Sinister says, I couldn't get into 24, which was annoying. I, I, I watched, did I watch three seasons, I think? I got through three seasons, know. and after that I was kind of done with it, because one of the issues I had with 24 is, because it's in real time and it takes place over 24 hours... I could kind of tune in around about episode 15 and kind of catch up pretty quickly. It's to what the f And anything that had gone before was probably irrelevant by that point, besides the overarching story. So the first, like, almost 20, maybe 16 episodes could be skipped, which kind of made it all a bit... Yeah. You know, for me, anyway, that was just well, for me. I mean, there's, there's I mean, 24... I mean, I've got, to, I've got to let it go. I've got to let it go. 24 is in the past now. It's my pinnacle of awesomeness 24 but there's loads of stuff now at the minute like I know that you've never even watched Sons of Anarchy have you nope oh my god I don't watch any TV I, I barely ever get a chance to watch Sons TV. of Anarchy mate I've watched it from the start and it's it's uh, a genre that I could get into I could get into but give it a chance and loved it and I'm so glad that I did I love the next thing I want to watch is Breaking Bad yeah I give it a watch I think for me the thing with Breaking Bad is this first season watched it absolutely loved it Got into the second season and it was just bad timing. That's all it was. The second season for me started very slow until the point where my shows that I watched religiously started again. So I've never gone back to it. That's my thing with Breaking Bad. And I don't even deny the fact that Breaking Bad isn't awesome because it is. It's I can see the chat's bringing up Dexter as well, but I've gone off Dexter. Yeah, my missus worships Dexter. She loves it's... it. I don't like it. This It's very difficult to get away in Dexter from the overarching story that he's going to be caught because of the nature of the show of him being a, mass, a serial killer who works for the police the general gist of most of the show is he might get caught this week kind of like house but house knew that and played on it like house has one story every week which is some weird disease they don't know what it is in the last five minutes they solve it but they play on that and they accept that that is the story there's nothing stupid going on there and they just make sure the filler's better with Dexter, it seems to play like, oh, we might get caught. You know he's not going to because, you know why? There's another fucking episode next week. Yeah. And they try and make that into the suspense bit. I would prefer if they ignored that aspect completely. And, like, he's good. They're not going to catch him. That's it. And now it's all about his actual story going on, his motivations behind the scene. That's what I would love to see out of that. When's Game of Thrones 3? Uh, first quarter next year, I believe. I think it's March. Is that long away? Yeah. Shit, dude, yeah. that has been. I mean, I season two was quarter. not that bad, was it? No. Season two wasn't too too long ago. I'm sure it wasn't. Season two was quite long ago now, when you think about That's it. That's what I mean, actually. It was a long, yeah. long ass yeah. time ago. And they must have known they were making a third one. But they do do a lot of episodes. Like, Breaking uh, Walking Dead is six episodes a season. Really? Is that what it was? I thought this, the first one was sort of a pilot, and that's why it was six. I'm not sure if season two might be longer, but I've watched a couple of season two. Um, it's okay so far. 
Uh, it's very difficult for them to try and change the aspect. It's, it's difficult with those type of shows, which is it's a zombie apocalypse, to mix that up more. The general thing that you can really worry about in a zombie apocalypse is being caught. It's like um, Nightboat. Do you ever remember Nightboat from The Simpsons? It was a piss take on Knight Rider because it was a boat like Knight Rider. And every week there was a fjord or an inlet or a stream because the boat obviously couldn't go on land. So every time the criminals always ended up near some convenient water location. And it's like uh, in The Walking Dead, it, they can only... For me, in those situations, you need to look past the obvious, which is you might get eaten by zombies, and start looking at something else. Because, yeah, that exists. That's cool. That shouldn't be one of the main themes of an episode is you almost get caught. Yeah. Because that's like... Yeah, we get that, but you, you can't keep doing that all the time, otherwise it completely loses fucking interest. There's always a convenient escape. Oh, we found this way out. Oh, this door leads this way. Oh, there's a guy on the walkie-talkie. Although it is funny. It is funny, but I wanted to see... You, you just, I, I wanted yeah. to ignore the main obvious bit. That's what I want to happen. You I need want to get that to Arrow. <sighs> I am loving Arrow. Is there any superheroes in Arrow that you weren't expecting to be in it yet? Um, or to expect to see on the screen. What do you mean, like? Um, I think it's you know that because it's oh. Arrow DC. Yes. All right. So is there any DC here? Because DC kind of gets a hard rap. I mean, there's Batman. Yeah. Superman. They're trying so fucking hard with Superman. And they need to let it go. I think Superman is actually probably one of the shittest superheroes because he can only lose in one way. The same thing we were just saying there. There is only one way the zombie apocalypse can end. There's only one way Superman can die. How many different variations on some dude finding some fucking kryptonite can you possibly do? I don't like heroes that have... The good thing about Batman is a bullet can kill Batman. Yeah. A knife can kill Batman. He has ways of dying. Superman, there's only one way he dies. And it's like, okay, so it's another movie about somebody finding kryptonite and then he wins at the end of the day. And it's like, you can't fucking reboot that shit. Do you know what I mean? I, mean, I didn't think the last guy did a bad job. The story of Superman Returns was dire. That's what fucked that film up. Because they had Kevin fucking Spacey in that film. Yeah, you don't, if you you made don't a, waste gold like that. You man. don't waste Kevin fucking Spacey. No. If you've got that guy made K Pax a good film. It's a terrible idea. Have you seen K Pax? No. It's a guy who thinks he's an alien. He is an alien at the end. It's a terrible fucking story, but you've got Spacey and Bridges taking fucking names left and right. It works. They didn't make a good Superman film with Kevin fucking Spacey in it. Ah, oh, diabolical movie. In that film, doesn't Kevin Spacey's like Luther say wrong really loud as well? <laughs> Maybe. Wrong. All I know is that Superman apparently fucks uh, Lois Lane and has a baby. Legit, they discussed it in Mallrats. Superman cannot blow his load inside a human. Unless woman. he's using a, uh, a kryptonite, kryptonite cr- which obviously would kill him. Which would obviously kill him because <laughs> if it's just the fucking weight. Blow her head off like a shotgun. He would blow her head off like a shotgun. But uh, getting back to the topic about Arrow, yeah. DC's got uh, enough more more characters than Marvel are equal to, I would guess. And it's, it's the fucking it's endless, mate. It's endless. I so who's guess. appeared in Arrow that you were like, oh? Well, I tell you what, it's very, very early on in Arrow, so I'm sort of glad they've not incorporated a lot of the uh, like the back characters and stuff like that. But they have included one, and it's Deathstroke. Now they basically there's this it's really fucking good how they did it as well. Basically, the story in the film is um, he basically he's a rich kid, knobhead, gets hauled onto an island and he finds out all this stuff about his dad and his dad's a kind bad of like guy. Arnold in Twins, maybe. But basically, yeah, and then like his dad gives him a list of people who's basically hurting the city and that he needs to go and fuck up or bring to justice or whatever. What? Just let me finish. His dad's an arsehole. Yeah, but his dad his dad was an arsehole, but then his, da- his dad basically kills himself. What an he, arsehole. But he gives him, he says, look, I've, I've done too much fucking up here. You need to survive and you need to take care survive! of it. Survive! Survive! So he basically gives his son this list and that's how it starts. But on the first episode on the island... As he's escaping, you see Deathstroke's mask just sat there. Nice. Deathstroke's nice. Deadpool, right? Essentially the same character? Yeah, it's a running thing with Marvel and DC. Because they're basically the same character. But, um... So... And then later in the story... He basically fi- he fights this assassin... Who's got this thing over his eye and stuff like that. He's a sniper. And then he shoots him in the eye with an arrow. And uh, Deathstroke gets shot in the eye. But then they don't say anything about his character. Oh, ho- ho, like they just assume that he's dead. <clears throat> and then it goes for like it keeps showing flashbacks of how he gets like his strength and stuff like that on the island. 
and then uh, it shows um, I think it was about two weeks ago a scene where he gets caught by the, this militia that's on the island and militia Death, yeah and Deathstroke's interrogating him and Deathstroke he just he's fucking mint Deathstroke he's just basically does he break the fourth wall no no no, no, no. that's just strictly Deadpool Deathstroke's awesome though uh, but that's the last you see of him so far in it but I can't explain it you see him just without the armour on and stuff like that and just with this thing over his eye that he uses to aim through and then he gets shot through that by um, our, um, the green arrow and then it just shows the flashback of when he was on the island with the mask on what is the green arrow's superpower? Hawkeye just really really good basically with, Hawkeye he's and just Batman. got good aim yeah he, he's been, he uses a bow and arrow like Hawkeye but he's got the wealth of who's Bruce Bullseye Wayne. then? And don't say Colin Farrell. <laughs> Bullseye is the same sort of thing, but he doesn't have a specific weapon. He's just pinpoint accurate with anything that he puts into his hands. Do you know what? I mean, the others have got a gimmick in terms of weapons. He hasn't. He's just basically pinpoint. It used to piss me off. Oh, did piss me off in Avengers is that Hawkeye misses. Why though? Because that's the whole point of Hawkeye. This is the guy who shoots down the helicarrier without even seeing the top the the fucking target I lo- he you know bends what? it in the air he misses a guy in the back of a truck I, do you know what I like about that though is, and it, I'm not it's a, totally, it's a different thing from what you're saying but you know when he's aiming and he's predictive aiming but when he shows him like this ball like that and then he looks behind him like that and then lets go of it. I just love them little accuracies and stuff like that it's like, but I know what you mean I know what you mean yeah yeah it's them silly things if you've got a character who can't miss it worked in Daredevil because Bull, uh, Daredevil could hear it coming. He didn't have to see it because it was too yeah. fast, but he could hear it coming. So it made sense that he could avoid some of Bullseye's attacks, but even still get hit by them. Hawkeye just straight up misses. I think he misses Robin Sparkles. Yeah, with a pistol. Dog shit. Not with a bow and arrow. Doesn't matter. A gun is more accurate than an arrow any day of the fucking week. Yeah, but if that, it's, not, it's the whole thing like training and stuff like that. Bullseye is Colin Farrell. <laughs> That's what you need to remember. It's Bullseye is Colin Farrell. Let's not mention the Green Lantern at all, please. Are they making a sequel? I think they are. Uh, I believe... I'm sure I read that they had their funding cut and thank the fucking Lord if they did. Do you feel bad for Ryan Reynolds getting shit on? Yes. Ryan Reynolds has been shit on in both superhero films, right? Green Lantern was terrible and he was also played the shittiest version of Deadpool ever. But look at it like this. He is playing Deadpool in the actual Deadpool When is that coming? That's been announced since, what, 2011? It was announced uh, in 2010 uh, and it was supposed to be 2013 but then once all the hype and things like that got brought up originally from uh, the Wolverine and from the sequels of their films that they've already released it got pushed back again so at the minute it's uh, pre-production 2014 Fuck and all they've confirmed is Ryan Reynolds is going to be Deadpool and that is it I hope it's good but we, I suppose we need to talk about the fucking Hobbit okay the Hobbit yeah. who gives a shit about the Hobbit we want to see we want to see who gives a shit about the Hobbit I don't give a shit as much as Lord of the Rings because it's you know, it's Bilbo on his little fucking journey. I can't get over it. It's the guy from The Office. <laughs> it's him from The Office. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to watch The Hobbit. I don't know why. It's Maybe because, because it will be, be an epic film. movie. Yeah, it's going to be an epic movie. I mean, we, it's three films again, right? So we're expecting probably 2016, 17. We'll probably yeah. see the finale of this shit. Um, but <laughs> yes, I do. Everyone, so people are excited about The Hobbit. It's a prequel to Lord of the Rings... Is Sauron in it? Don't know. Is he? Sauron's no, bad One of the best scenes of Lord of the Ring is the elves versus Sauron. It's a fucking mint fight scene, that is. Yeah, it is. But they cut his fingers off. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Well, um, that's... I, no, I think it's a different time frame because at that point, isn't Sauron banished? I'm not up on my fucking law. I don't know myself. But Legolas is definitely in it. That's like lasses, isn't it? But I don't know. The Hobbit just—it seems like they're playing a little bit of Lord of the Rings. I mean, I get that it's an equally as popular story. There's no doubt about that. I can't say I've read the Tolkien books, but it's not grabbing me. The Hobbit because Lord of the Rings—you knew the ending was coming. You knew that they were going to Mordor. It was going to be fucking kick-ass. All that shit was going on. Boromir, we were going to get the awesome one does not simply line, <laughs> <laughs> which is all important. And plus, it had Sean the Bean in it, which is class. How could, you said that like it was two separate things. Boromir has that line, and of course Sean Bean's in it. He, he was everything was in that movie. That film is dog shit without Sean the Bean. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he got like spit all over. I was gonna fucking do it then as well, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm not fucking feeling but, um, it. not feeling the Hobbit, but I'm gonna watch it. It's one of those films. It's like a Marvel film. I wouldn't have gone to see Thor, but I, I kind of went anyway because it was gonna be a Marvel film and it was yeah. awesome and I was kind of chuffed with that. Uh, I've seen every Hulk film at the cinema. Dog shit. <laughs> uh, the Edward Norton one is a good Hulk film though. It's, uh, it's all like right it. besides the ending. I think that actual British guy ruined the whole fucking thing for me because he was such a twat. Who? The guy who turns into abomination. Emil Blonsky. Yeah. What a twat. Well, and they never get the general right, don't you think? I think you did. What was we going to say? No, I was just thinking that I think they went this way in terms of an adversary that was equal to the Hulk, and that's why they used the abomination. But I think I do think that they get the general right. I don't. And let's be honest as well. Until uh, X Men First Class, that had the best cameo in it ever. <laughs> I was so happy when I went to see that film. I had to nurse a boner when it was happening. No, X Men First Class is is brilliant. Yeah, but I know brilliant. it is because I expected. Right? I knew that Tony Stark was going to be in the Hulk film. But it's just the end of it where the generals obviously he's fucked up and he's in the bar getting pissed, and then you hear his voice coming in. Oh, like, that. Oh, that's yeah. not what I thought. Oh, yeah. you're talking about the Hulk, not X Men First Class. No, no, no. that's in the Hulk. I know it is. I'm talking. Yeah, you said X Men First Class. That's all. Like. I, was talking, I thought he's meant the Wolverine cameo. No, no, no. The Wolverine cameo is, is my favourite cameo. Even though it's just like that. But it's just the end of it, like, where you're hearing, like, ah, oh, the smell of stale beer and peanuts and stuff like that. And you hear his voice straight away and you see, like, his dapper suit and stuff. And it's just like, man, look at him. <laughs> How can you not love Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark? How many times have you rewatched the Iron Man 3 trailer? Fuck off. How many? It's so good. <laughs> have you rewatched yeah. re it a lot? Yeah. I'm just trying to. Because it's so many story arcs just in that one trailer, and it's just like I cannot wait to see what he does with it. It's not Favreau directing, you know that, right? No, it's not. He drops back. Do you think that's going to cause a problem? Nope. Did you see the release the the star the next Star Trek movie plot as well? Oh, the uh, what they call it? It's plot canon, summary. Isn't it? No, no, it's on Earth. It's on Earth. It's at Starfleet Academy. I can't fucking wait for that. I can't wait for that. I hope it's got as much lens flare. <laughs> as the original film, yeah. but it's fucking. We went really watching awesome. that on IMAX, didn't we? We did see it on IMAX, and we had that guy going, How many times have you seen the Star Trek movie? All right, everybody give it up for the big Star Trek movie on Leonard yeah. Nemo. Yeah. We heard to the guy doing that when we watched the Dark Knight that Rising guy. in the morning. What was he saying? Yeah. Anybody ever seen the Batman movie? How many times have you seen the Dark Knight? It must have been a different guy because that guy, then he was it was a bit annoying at first, but then when everyone started like speaking to everyone and stuff like that, he, he came part of the background and actually palatable. Because <laughs> you weren't listening to him. No. That's fucking awesome. That's the best reason. But we also want to see uh, Seven Psychopaths. Oh, I've only seen one trailer of it, but it's a trailer that immediately caught me. It's good. It, it looks good. mint. And let's be honest, put Christopher Walken in any film and he is genius. Did you ever see Hairspray? No, but he's good in that. He's good in that. I can guarantee He's Travolta's husband because Travolta plays a woman. He's like he's he's always got memorable lines in every film, like in um, uh, View to a Kill, where he plays Max Zorin. No, you he's in a James that? Bond film. Yeah, he plays Max Zorin. Fuck in View to a Kill, he's the main bad guy. But he's because it's um, it's Walking's like he's famous for breaking up sentences just randomly. Like they're talking about horses and they're at Max Zorin's stables, and James Bond says to him, uh, "I trust you ride," and he says, "I'm happiest." In the saddle, like that. <laughs> but it's so walking, and like, there's loads of stuff, like Seven Psychopaths. There's a clip where some guy's got a gun to him. Um, he goes, says something like, Get on the fucking ground. And he goes, No, I've got a gun. He goes, So? <laughs> <laughs> but he's facing it. It's so good. He's an evil walking. looking bastard. Yeah, walking. but do you remember in uh, Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Where he's like that military guy here. He's goes, such a brilliant Your father cameo. got this over enemy lines, stuffed it in his ass. No, he's a genius. He's I'm just, so good. All these fucking guys are going on about the Avengers sequel. It's, the, it's no, no. Let's not let's not press out. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It is gonna be good. Yeah. I mean, uh, Thanos. I don't know anything about him. I assume he's badass though. Yeah, he's badass. He's pretty good. Pretty badass. I don't know. Do you know? And the Riddick poster came out today. I've seen that poster before, you know, even though it's supposed to have come out today. I'm adamant, 100% that I've seen that poster before. Where he's it's got very similar to the Chronicles garb, one. Where he's, got, he's got that like rustic garb over his face and he's just looking down and I'm adamant that I've seen that before. I hope it's good. Hey, but say that is Chronicles of Riddick, renowned shit film. No so many way. good parts. It's renowned as a shit film. Chronicles of Riddick? Yeah. Fuck off. I swear to God. Chronicles of Riddick is awesome. Who's well, with me? I'm with you. That's good. the point. It's the audience with us. I want to know. 
Let's Chronicles of Riddick's fucking best part of that film is when them guys come in to the room where he is and he's stood next to the candles and he just says you guys ain't afraid of the dark are you he says, he says the light hurts my eyes and he puts them out with his hands it's one of the best throwbacks to one of the 90s action movies I've seen in such a long fucking the time character, the character of Riddick is meant, the only thing I don't like about Riddick is his first name is Richard <laughs> Richard B. Riddick Richard B. Riddick Rick Ricky Riddick <laughs> Rick Riddick Ricky Riddick uh, we watched a film yesterday I kind of want to bring it up because it, the ending fucked me off so much it fucked you off. I had to rewind it to show you how fucked up I was with it. Yeah, Contagion. Who's seen Contagion? Everybody loves Riddick. Oh, the law doesn't like it. Fucking Fuck asshole. Fuck the law. Take his mod status off. Fucking hate the law. Uh, Contagion. Anybody seen this film? Contagion? I thought it was it's... a good film until the ending. What a fucking star-studded audience. Uh, yeah. Cast, though. Jesus Christ. Killed Gwyneth Paltrow within six minutes. Straight up awesome. Deserved Always, it. And she was a slut. Yep. Fuck yeah. Gargling balls. Matt Damon. Bit chunky. Fancy. Jason Bourne. Morpheus was in it. Talia al Ghul was in it. Is uh, that a name? Talia al Ghul? Yeah. Uh, well, that... that's character name, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It is. Yeah. I, I always get it wrong because of the Raz al Ghul thing. Miranda Tate. Miranda Tate. Hmm. And it's got the uh, the guy who plays the Chinese bad guy in Dark Knight. Dark Knight. And well. it's got Scarecrow in it. I'm good with calculation. Jude Law. Jude Law's got a bit fucked up recently. Because we were talking about, uh, before we go on to Contagion, Repo Men. I doubt anybody's seen that either. But I thought Repo Men was fucking class. I didn't like it. I like the idea. Although it was, that is so, it's one of those ideas that you can't really suspend your disbelief that much. Because there is no way in hell they would allow people to go around killing people for leases. That just wouldn't happen. No matter what kind of fucked up dystopian future we've got, they are not going to cut out your heart. Wait a minute, you just used a massive word. And I don't know what that means, so I'm going to take that as disrespect. <laughs> yeah. I what, make the sale. Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make the sale. Uh, Repo Men. Uh, if you don't know, know Repo Men, the essential storyline is Jude Law and Forrest Whitaker work for a company that leases organs. So if you have like liver cancer... Uh, they will give you a liver, but you pay for it over a few years. If you don't keep up with your payments, they come and repossess it by cutting it out of you in the middle of your house, basically. <laughs> That's the idea. They've all got barcodes on as well. Oh, you can scan them from afar. Boop. I'm scanning you right now. Boop. Uh, which is pretty funny. But I did like when they were scanning people in the street who were nearly up, and they were shouting, better take care of that heart, I'll be seeing you in a couple of days, and people were running off and shit. That was fucking funny. But it was all right. I thought that was okay. But Jude Law hasn't done anything outstanding since. I mean, he's been Holmes. carried by Sherlock Holmes recently. No, I, think. I don't think he was. What do you mean carried like as an actual actor? Yeah. I don't know. I, do I, you think he played well alongside Robert Downey? Yes, I think for me. Uh, I mean, I just don't like Jude Law. Oof, oof. Bombshell. But <laughs> when he put his uh, take on Watson, I thought it was really fucking good. I thought it was really. I could good. see such a level difference between him and Robert Downey, though. Oh yeah, by a mile. But that's that's you know. The, but Robert Downey's been acting since what, like he's six. Yeah, it's not just that, but you got to think of the part in the film as well because it's not called Doctor Watson; it's called Sherlock Holmes. No, true. He's not going to upstage him. No, I mean in terms of his actual performance. Okay. I'm not saying he was upstaging him, but in terms of his acting performance, compared to how um, comfortable Robert Downey appears to be in his role. Yeah. Watson still seems like he's acting a little bit, if you know what I mean. Mm. For me, anyway, I just kind of got that impression. Compared to see how into it Robert Downey is, I didn't get that with fucking... Uh... But anyway, let's talk about Contagion. Okay. Contagion is a virus film, which goes in the classic style. Someone gets a virus in fucking... Oh, he's in Tokyo! Why do they make it out like Hong Kong and Tokyo are literally the dirtiest places on the planet? If you're going to get some shit, you're getting it in Tokyo. SARS... Oh, look at Tokyo. Well, let's just be honest, though. In reality... You're getting it from Manchester. Yeah, really. If you go and have sex with one of our local <laughs> local breed of women, you're in more trouble than you are in Hong Kong. Uh, but seriously, every fucking disease movie revolves around America, but it never starts there. It's always somebody flying yeah. back from fucking China or fucking Japan or something. Good point. Uh, just because of the population, I suppose, it's so, so dense. It's like 8.4... It's got the numbers of how many people live there. It's got like Los Angeles, 2 million people. Hong Kong. That in Los Angeles, man. I don't think it was that different. It was about two, two point four million, and then it went to Hong Kong, eight point four million people. That's how densely populated that fucking area of the world is, which is just crazy. Because I can't stand being in an elevator with you. I do tend to fart in elevators. It's not even that. It's just you, you, you're encroaching on my personal space. I do tend to shit myself in elevators. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> but uh, nobody, they don't get a global wipeout at the end. Always pisses me off. 
No, I don't want to see a happy ending to a film about a fucking killer disease. Well, do you know what? It was the way that the disease was made, and it shows it in the last five seconds of the film. When I watched that's that, the bit that pissed you off so yeah. much, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I joined this film. I joined it because I was because um, you came out of my house. You stuck that on while I was sorting my daughter out ready for bed. And I joined the film about 20, 25 minutes into mm. it. I mean, Paltrow was already tea cakes. <laughs> um, but I got into it and I enjoyed it. I got to admit, I enjoyed it. And then, like, the end of it. And the, this is going to be a spoiler. So here's your spoiler warning now. It's an old film anyway. So, you know, if you've seen it, the point. ending. Um, but the way that they, um, they find the cure as well, like, they're working on a cure. And this woman's got, like, a prototype. And she's just yeah. like, she's just like, fuck it, I'll try it on myself. And then she goes and sees a sick dad and she's like, licking his nuts. <laughs> yeah. No, I am totally not ill. It works. Let's bash this out. Everyone's cured. And in the last five seconds, it shows patient zero and how this um, thing was created. The chef. The chef was Dirty patient chef. zero. But check this out. Okay. So a bat takes a piece of banana off a tree. It's flying. It drops the banana. A pig piece it, picks up this banana and eats it. Now, the combination of those two salivas from the bats and the pig on the fruit now created this virus. A chef gets hold of this pig and puts its fingers in its mouth. No skin breach or anything. Pow, he is now patient zero. That's the way it goes. Why was he fingering the mouth hole of that pig? Why would you not? Fair enough, fair enough. But I do want to talk about something which has been really funny this week. Is you raging at people on YouTube about movie stuff. (laughs) <laughs> you get so angry Ghost gets so angry when people get movies wrong it's something wrong. that I'm passionate about though Like it, it drives you mental is it here's what it is and if you've not seen The Dark Knight I apologise because this is the end of The Dark Knight now there was um, a torrent put out that was a decent quality of The Dark Knight like 1080p quality torrent so people started putting up on YouTube like clips of The Dark Knight like the fight scenes the ending so I was just listening to the audio on them when I was working because I fucking love it, let's be honest. And the Dark Knight Rises ending is the best ending in any film of all time. It was so good. It was so closed up and awesome. Now, here's the thing. Basically, uh, some guy on one of the videos said that um, when it all happens, and if you've not seen it now, again, please do try and disregard this. I'll do something stupid like... um into the camera when you can listen again excuse me look forward to that yeah (laughs) well basically someone said that um uh look the top comment on the video was you know i love how this uh, scene finished you know it was a complete closure you think you know alfred's really hurt that he's lost bruce and blah 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 and he goes on with it it was a really good post that he made and he says just like that that ending part where bruce has obviously planned it so that he walks in well so alfred walks into this place so they can just like you know nod on so he can basically let him know you know, I'm still alive, I've made it, I can live without the Batman. Um, don't mourn for me because I'm not dead. And it was beautiful. That ending was beautiful. And this guy is just like, no, you've misunderstood this, my friend. <laughs> what happened was, Bruce has told Alfred that he's alive. That's why they ended up in the same place on holiday. He told him, look, I'm going to be here, meet me here. But he was so adamant that this guy was wrong, who obviously brought this like awesome synopsis of the film up. And he's like, no, this is what happened. He's already pre-planned it, yeah? He's already pre-planned it. Idiots. And I was just like, well, no, dude, he, he hasn't pre-planned it because he... W- I, was being, I was being all right about it at first. I was saying, like, he wouldn't have pre-planned it because he wouldn't have let Alfred mourn like that at the actual gravestone of himself. He wouldn't have let him mourn like that. He would have told him, look... It would have been, and Nolan isn't stupid enough to miss something like that out of the film. He would have put in like, you know, like a sort of the ending of a phone call that Alfred's on or something like that. Or the fact that Alfred was surprised to see him. Exactly. (laughs) And the actual footage of when he sees him at the actual restaurant. And if he are planning to meet up, he's not going to meet up and fly halfway around the world just for a nod. So anyway, and this guy's like, no. Well, how the fuck has he known where Alfred is at this time of year? It's like, well, okay then. Alfred's already told him that he goes to this place once a year and that's probably why he knows where he's there. Yeah, but how does he know that he's there at that time? Because he's Bruce fucking Wayne. He could have given up all his wealth. He could have had nothing, but he's got his connections into everything. And I said to him, I said, that's your argument. You're worried about that, but you're not worried about the point that when Gotham City is completely locked down, Bruce is in a hole in Morocco with no wealth and a broken back, but he still gets into Gotham City again. And you're asking, you're saying that this Alfred thing's wrong. 
Yeah, but all right then. How's he on that? Because he's Bruce fucking Wayne. <laughs> I fucking hate people like that that are so blatantly wrong, but they're like, no, no, this is what happens. It's hard to get something like ah, that. Ah, I'd love to kill someone. Like uh, spoiler that. over. Spoiler over. Spoiler over. Spoiler over. Uh, it's very weird when people miss. Cra- I'm extremely my, I don't know why I sweat off my head. Extremely obvious parts of movies like that. I do find it about. I do find it very, very fucking confusing how you can miss something so blatantly obvious. Sometimes I get it wrong though. I do get it wrong, but not when it's something fucking simple as that. Jesus Christ. Fuck him. I'd love to know where he lives and just burn his house down. How many people would you love to find where they live on the internet? Oh, do you know that part at the end of Jane Silent Bob where when they're getting trash talks on the internet they basically get the addresses out of nowhere where everyone lives and beat the shit out of them. I'd love to do that. <laughs> You're a very angry man. It's, I'm not an angry man it's just you know it's because you've got complete anonymity. 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 Fuck you. It's, I'm going to get it. Anonymity. No. Anonymity. Anonymity. You joined in with retail time with Goku. <laughs> hey, no, fuck it, include me. Wait, say it again. Anonymity. Anonymity. There you go. Ha 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 ha! You've got to do it in musical sound. Anonymity. <laughs> you can do it to music, you can do it. Anonymity. There you go. Anonymity. 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 <laughs> fuck off. Go on. I've said it anyway. I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Motherfucker, you know how to spell it. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, fuck you. <laughs> hip, hip hop, hip hop anonymous. <laughs> Damn you! Look at him, the easy ones. <laughs> so, what were we talking about? You raging at people on the internet. It's not even that. I mean, even when I'm doing a stream or something like that, and you get someone coming in talking absolute bollocks, I don't mind it. It entertains me. It's just when someone leaves, like, a comment like that where they're so secure in their little fucking dome that they're right and they are so wrong but even when you try and be, you know no dude this is what happens and you actually cry about it and you, you know you, you fucking you can't I don't think I've ever seen you coy I would not describe you as coy I am coy I'm calm calm and coy I'm calm wait, wait oh fuck let me show you how calm I am On that note, we're taking a break before we talk about the rest of the games we've been playing, which is Mario Galaxy, Dead Island, Minecraft, SimCity 4, Hitman, and also some more Christmas stuff. So we're going to take a quick two-minute break, and then we're going to talk about some games again.